So let's start with section number one of our catalysis course. Let's understand the basic concepts and catalysis. First off, everything I want to show you why it's important and in what do we use catal a catalyst. And since ancient times we've been using it to produce wine, for example, yeast. We've also used it to produce cheese and also bread. You know these are more into food industry but of course food industry is a very important part of our life and what the people study or saw was that they needed to add the previous batch in order to continue with the next one if you added a plus b let's say this is water and this was the floor so we wanted to produce bread and if you just mix them together to, uh, together nothing will happen but if you added the previous one which contained the gist which is our catalyst then we will produce what it's called bread. So they understood that this previous batch contained something extra that did not react it, but essentially went and helped us to produce the bread. And the same with wine and cheese. And it's very important because that started the study of dead substances. Actually, the formal study starts in 1700s or even 800s. Major uses right now are essentially petroleum refining, a lot of precious metals such as palladium, uh, platinum, copper, vanadium, pentoxide, etc. Also many processes, I would say that this is also a huge percentage. And the production of uh, catalyst converters or autos in order to get not so bad gases, which will be these ones here which compared to the, for example, SO2 versus SO3 or NO3 or carbon monoxide, those are worst. Now, one third of the chemical processes will eventually need or will use a catalyst. So that's why it's also important, even though you might think catalysts are used only in super high-tech uh, processes, uh, the answer is not really. It's very common. Actually, chances are that you are already using a substance that has been used or produced with a catalyst and this one is a, another very important reason the global demand on catalyst was estimated on almost three billion dollars so well at least this should be an incentive to understand or produce or research more catalysts and since the automotive and chemical industries are starting to grow a little bit faster the global catalyst market is expected to experience faster growth in the next year. So keep that in mind. I actually got this from BASF or BASF.com. You can go and check in their catalyst section. I think BASF is one of the most important and biggest uh, catalyst manuf uh, manufacturers. For example, they had adsorbents, which take out essentially water or many other substances. Energy storage is very important. Many times you have the energy and you want to store them in, let's say, these type of materials. You can use them, for example, batteries. Actually, there's here, batteries, and etc. There are many other, for example, temperature, emissions of probably CO2 or SO2 or any related uh, gas, for example. And the most important one, I would say that process catalyst these are very huge volumes because it's very common in chemical, petrochemical, polyolefin and refining industries, which probably you know these are the driving motors on modern society. So good. Let me show you one last important or one last part. It's the chemical catalysis. This is very important as well. This is essentially on the chemical industry directly. On custom-made catalysis, many times you got a I don't know, a patent or a patent process in which you got A, B and you produce C and you are selling C. But this needs a special catalyst which is only made at that temperature, that pressure and that concentration and that type of reactor and, for, and you got the only reactor in the world so you will need a custom catalyst. And of course they are very expensive. The refining catalyst, once again I told you, actually we saw them here. In process catalysts, we're going to see a lot of refining. And for the olefin, catalyst is essentially, uh, where is it? Uh, 
polypropylene, polyethylene, polyethylene all the supermassive production of uh, polymers, well, they need catalysts in order to achieve better performance. And that's why we are going to center our study right now, not only in theory, but a little bit more uh, into application on how do we, or how can we use our knowledge on catalysis for our reactor design. What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues, or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.